Hey piggy people, it's Skinny Pigs One here. So today's video, I'm just going to share with you a quick update about what's been going on around here. It has easily been the most stressful almost two weeks ever to deal with pig issues. So there is a um, sectioned off area, two of them. So Reese is over here and Velvet is back here in a much smaller section. So if you didn't watch my last video about what I think about spaying and neutering, you might want to watch that. I'll put it up in the i cards, then you can kind of have a better understanding of my mindset about spaying and neutering guinea pigs. So if you guys don't know, I have 10 pigs. Five of them were already altered, five of them were not. So butter pecan and apple dumpling are already spayed. They came to me that way. From a rescue. Um, Huckle and Angus I chose to neuter and Annie I chose to spay. So that leaves me with five girls who aren't spayed. So I decided that I would like to spay the rest of the ladies. So I went ahead and so far spayed Reese and Velvet. And at the time I was thinking I was going to do two at once because Reese and Velvet are very nervous pigs to be out of the environment here, especially Velvet. So I thought them having company would be the best so that they can go in the same cage to the vet, um, recover together. I don't know what land I live in, but that was in the perfect world land. So I sent them off together. Um, reflecting back now, having two guinea pigs go through a major surgery is a lot to handle for recovery even when things are going perfectly smoothly. So Reese um, will be able to go back with the herd uh, come Monday. So right now when I'm filming this, this is Saturday. So we just have a couple days to go. Um, Velvet is behind because we had a complication. So I'm going to get more into her complication for my next video. Uh, I think we're finally on the road of recovery. Uh, but basically, at about one week into recovery, we had to start right back at square one. It's been so stressful, and I've had so many emotions about it. With any surgery, there's risks and there's complications that can happen post-op. And unfortunately, we had some post-op complications that have nothing to do with... Um, the place we had the surgery done so I don't want anybody to think that um, the medical staff at the clinic where we went has been awesome and super supportive and very helpful it's just it's one of those things of course I had one of those pigs that had um, one of those crazy complications that you can possibly have from spaying so that's where we're at right now um, Velvet's been an absolute dream to look after. She is so shy, but she's really coming around for me handling her because I've had to handle her a lot. I cannot wait for her to get to go back with the herd and to be all recovered. I am going to have to take some time to think about spaying the last three girls because this has shaken me up. I do believe what's happened with her is like rare and not something that commonly happens. But still, um, I'll have to speak with the vet who does the spaying to get her opinion on it as well. See if her mind has changed at all for spaying the other ladies and what have you. So uh, we go Tuesday for um, her to get checked up again. And then at that time, you know, I can ask more questions. And after our checkup is when I will update you more about what's going on with her just so... I have it clear and concise to tell you guys because I'm just going to be honest um, when we had to go get stuff fixed for Velvet I was so stressed out that like things were going in one ear and out the other and after I had talked with the vet on the phone I couldn't even remember what she said basically I like I'm not kidding that I've just been stressed one day I forgot to even eat and it was to the point where every morning when I would get up and know that I would have to come and check on Velvet and check her incision and see how she was doing. The dread 
of what am I going to find was so strong that I actually like felt sick to my stomach. Um, yeah, it's been really eye-opening and humbling. And all I can say is I just cannot wait for my two girls to go back with the herd and to be over this. I think the hardest thing about this is knowing that this was something that I chose for them. And again, if you watched my video, you'll know it's so that they don't have to deal with the crazy hormone mood swings, so that they don't have the risk of uterine cancers or ovarian cysts later. So I did it for their health, but then to have a complication happen, and no, it's because I chose to have her go through the surgery, um, was really messing with my head. Um, and then another thing that's come up is Apple. I didn't tidy her bum every single night like I always have. And if you know anything about Apple, back in the day she used to get fungal infections, like yeast fungal infections, um, all the time if I didn't keep her tidy. So it's been, I want to say, almost a year and a half or two years of me just tidying her bum and she's been perfect. So as I've been distracted with velvet, there were some nights that I didn't do her bum, like didn't tidy it up and I thought maybe she doesn't even really need it anymore. Well that was wrong, so now she has the start of a fungal infection. So clearly me tidying her bum every single night was not just being paranoid, she needs it. So I've had to message my vet to ask about more of the antifungal med that gets rid of that. Um, Oh, and another, like, random fluke thing that happened the other night. I was sitting down on the floor, hand-feeding Velvet. And up here in the herd cage, I heard a huge, loud commotion. So it sounded like somebody ran really fast. And then all of a sudden, I heard crying. And it was the sound that, like, I can't even describe to you guys. I have never heard it before. But, like, it set off, like, a huge red flag. So I carefully had to get Velvet situated so that I could stand up and pecan was lying completely on her back and raisin wasn't too far from her so i know exactly what happened just because of raisin um she only has one eye so it's, it happens a lot that she'll run into a pig and not see them especially if she gets startled she'll just zoom so i am guarantee you that she zoomed and absolutely ran over pecan knocking her over so pecan was um eating hay over here and there's a liner here so there's a step down so I bet she tipped her over maybe ran over top of her completely flipping her over but when I stood up pecan was on her back crying and she was trying to roll over but she couldn't so pecan does have arthritis in her hind end so she really was having a hard time moving and absolutely terrified so I gently flipped her over, took her out of the cage to make sure she was okay, put her back in the cage with a big pile of fresh hay and she was eating and acting completely normal so everything was okay. But it was absolutely heartbreaking to see her on her back in terror and not being able to roll over because then of course I was like what if I wasn't in this room because I was just in here feeding Velvet just before I was about to go to bed and I was just finished with Velvet. I was going to be putting Velvet back in the cage and turning out the light saying goodnight. So I was so thankful that I was there for her because then obviously my mind went to what would have happened to her if she flipped on her back and nobody was around. Like the stress of that alone I'm sure could have been deadly. And also you should never be putting your guinea pigs on their back because you run the risk of them having a stomach twist. So, especially with all her digestive issues, that was one of the first things when I took her out that I was just terrified. What if it made some of her stomach turn or anything like that? So that was really scary. But thankfully she's fine. She's snoozing. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. You scared mommy. So, I think that's basically all the updates I have for you. I'll share with you guys, as I said, more about Velvet. I just, once we go back for a recheck and I get everything straight in my mind to share with you guys, I'll share about what's going on. And I'll also make sure I'll share with you and film it when 
Reese gets to go back with everybody. I know she'll be really glad to go back. She does not like being away from them. She's been really calm over there because, I mean, she can still see everybody. But I think she's definitely going to want to come back to see everybody. It's been really sweet because there's a bunch of times where her and Velvet are laying side by side with just grid separating them. Um, I'm not going up too close to Velvet just because she's a more nervous pig and at this time I do not even want her to startle or feel like she has to move from her comfortable position. So yeah, I think that kind of catches everybody up to speed. Um, holy doodle, it's been a lot of vet bills, it's been a lot of worry. Uh, and it's been a real, real learning experience. And as I said, I've got some really big thinking and discussing to go on to figure out how we move forward with stuff or if my plan of spaying the other girls is not reasonable or isn't a good idea. I don't know. So anyway, um, thanks for all your support, guys. Bye-bye. If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!